Okay, just want to do a real quick video here to debunk this uh, posty teaching that 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 proves conclusively destroys the preacher rapture because it proves that the Antichrist shows up before the body of Christ leaves. Um, I don't think so. And they all stop at verse 3. So funny, cracks me up. They just cannot handle the scriptures. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall, not, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So they say, see, there's two things. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he that as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, yet with you, I told you these things? Usually they stop at verse 3, but sometimes they get really kind of dangerous and, and you know, uh, brave, and they'll go into verse 5. Okay, but that's where they stop. They don't want you to keep reading. Look what Paul says, verse 6, And now ye know what withholdeth that he the Antichrist, might be revealed in his, the body of Christ's time. That's what we're in right now. You see, and again, these people are, they have no idea, they can't understand Scripture. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, they say, but we're the bride of Christ. We can't be Christ and the bride of Christ. Oh, well, they don't, you don't understand the basic thing there of marriage, right? To become one flesh. We are part of Christ's body. So that's why, back in the book of Acts, where you have Paul, he's attacking, well, Saul at the time, He's, he's attacking Christians, and Jesus says to him, he says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He's persecuting the body of Christ. But Jesus says, you're persecuting me. You see, that's what's going on here. So you have there in verse 6, he, the Antichrist, the man of sin, or verse 4, might be revealed in his time, his, Christ's time. Keep reading. For the mystery of iniquity... The Antichrist doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, the Holy Spirit is hindering, until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Okay? The Antichrist can't show up until the body of Christ leaves. So can you prove that? Go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 5. Verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. It's talking about Christians. 24 elders there. They're saved. They're redeemed. It's not Old Testament Jews. And New Testament, the 12 disciples or something. The 12 Jewish disciples. Uh-uh. No. 24 elders are a different group. How do you know? If you can read plain English. Hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation. They're not Jews. Solely Jews. I think there could be some that are in there that are Jews, but... Verse 11, And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels. Jesus talked about in the resurrection, they shall be as the angels of God. Many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I sing, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth on the, upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. So there's obviously redeemed Christians that are in heaven there. You have the twenty-four elders and then you have the great number of angels there. You know, again, I said, you know, before, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are married, uh, nor are given in marriage, excuse me, but are as the angels of God in heaven. See? We're going to be angels in heaven as redeemed saints. So, there's definitely Christians in heaven in Revelation chapter 5. It's right there. Can't be Old Testament saints, 
because they weren't from every kindred, people, tongue, nation. So there's Christians in heaven, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, in Revelation chapter 5. Look what happens in Revelation chapter 6. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Christians in heaven in Revelation chapter 5, the Lamb is found worthy to open the seals, and he opens them in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 2, the Antichrist is unleashed. You see, it lines up perfectly with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The Antichrist is not going to show up until the body of Christ is gone. And if the posties would just keep reading in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beyond verse 5, they would clearly see it. There's some liars in the post system, some big-time liars. So I just wanted to do this video quickly to just destroy this little argument that they have. They try to say it's irrefutable. It's been refuted very easily. Have a nice day.